I have heard it said of parenting, the days are long, but the years are short. The point being, it's easy to find yourself consumed with the demands of the day. Changing, feeding, clothing, playing, napping, feeding again, changing again, and so on. And then one day you look up and they drive off to start their own lives. As they disappear from view, you wonder how it went so fast. The days are long, but the years are short. Part of what surprises us is that some of the most profound changes take place slowly over time. We might see a child hit a growth spurt, but most of the growth is is incremental, easy to miss in the day-to-day. A millimeter here, a pound there. The next thing we know, they're as tall as we are, and there's no food in the fridge. And honestly, I think this is how many of us prefer change. Slow and steady, almost unobservable. We know things change, but often we like them to take their sweet time doing so. So what do we do when the pace of change moves quicker than we might like? How do we respond to change even when it is welcomed? In our context, the context I find myself in as a pastor of a church, what do we do when we experience, when we experience changing patterns in worship attendance or in giving? When our neighborhood looks different, what are we to do? When leadership changes, how do we respond? Scripture suggests that we focus on what is not changing. Hearing about disagreements among a people experiencing the growing pains of maturing as a church, change that's taking place, with change perhaps leading to divisiveness, Paul, one of these early converts to Christianity, writes to the early church in 1 Corinthians 1, verses 10 through 12, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. It's a lofty goal. He goes on, my brothers and sisters, some from Chloe's household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this, one of you says, I follow Paul, another, I follow Apollos, another, I follow Cephas, we know that to be Peter, and still other, another will say, I follow Christ. You see, with some struggling to figure out who they are supposed to be following, remember, this is a, the early days of the church. They're still trying to figure out what it, what it means to live this way of Christ. Paul attempts to encourage the church here as it relates to the, the, the folks in Corinth, suggesting that they be united in mind and thought. How? How will they do such a thing? Well, after chasing several rabbits in this letter, Paul offers his perspective on choosing a leader to follow in 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, starting with the sixth verse. I read from this letter, hearing these words, follow with me. I, meaning Paul, planted the seed. Apollos watered it. But God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters, they have, as I turn my page here, this is the the disadvantage of having a real Bible, right? The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God, and we say, thanks be to God. You see, the church in Corinth, and I I might even say just more generally, the church at this time was changing. It was trying to figure out what it was and, and what it was becoming. Paul reminds them in this letter in particular, it's really not about any one leader, because each leader has the same purpose to work 
with God to help the church, meaning the people, grow. What Paul points to is a continuity to the Spirit's work that we all get to participate in. Even today, we get to participate in this in this long line of, of activity that the Spirit has initiated. What's more, Paul makes a claim here that, about leadership that I, that I think is easy to miss. He says, I planted, Apollo swatered, but God makes it grow. Growth, new life, is God's work. God does the growing, and leaders, and all of us, I mean, amazingly, get to help. All of this uh, reminds me, uh, just I'm thinking about my time working at, at Applebee's. If you're not familiar with Applebee's, a grill and bar, um, they still exist, you know. I've, I've seen them around. When I was working, they were, there, they were at the height of their power. It was, a, it was a grand and glorious time. And in my five years working for this organization, I, I believe that this particular store where I worked, we had four general managers in that five-year span, each one unique as a leader, each one with a different way of working with the assistant managers and the rest of, our, uh, rest of the staff, each one with their own way of running the store. We had a guy who stayed after hours and played poker with the staff. We had a guy who only worked day shifts and would never work a weekend. Some walked the store constantly. They were always on the go. Others rarely left the office unless they were called to resolve some dispute or solve some problem. Most of them I enjoyed working with. One of them I couldn't stand. Each new general manager brought change. Now, as I've already suggested, most of the time we like our change slow and steady. A new general manager almost every year? How did Applebee's make it work? Why would they do such a thing? How did it work for them? Well, the leaders brought their unique personalities, their experiences, their ideas. But each one focused on one thing, being America's favorite neighbor. It was something we all learned from day one of training. We sold food and beverages, but the goal was to create an environment where everyone could feel like a part of an an exciting, thriving community. Applebee's, even today, if you go into an Applebee's, will have local um, sports, local high schools. The, 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 The stuff that's up on the walls is meant to reflect the community in which it's located. Yes, general managers came and went, but the purpose for each, the, each general manager had that goal. So, so, so did everyone working. So whether you were in the kitchen or on the floor or behind the bar, you were trying to create this sense of community and belonging. Applebee's worked for so long because whatever it did was built on that foundation. We're going to be America's favorite neighbor. And so the leadership could change even frequently so long as they all stayed committed to that purpose, to that idea, to to that foundation. Well, well before Applebee's was created, Paul encouraged the church to remember their foundation. His point being that life together was, again, not about the leaders, but about one leader, Jesus. Quarreling about whom to follow missed the point, Paul suggests. Paul and Apollos and all the others were working to build on the one foundation of Jesus. They were trying to live out the way of Christ. So as we sing, the church's one foundation is Jesus Christ, her Lord. Right? There's there's this one foundation foundation that we all build upon. And and yes, leaders come and go, Paul and Apollos, Peter, right? All these other leaders, Paul would say, "Don't, don't get focused on that. Remember the foundation that we all build upon. It's Christ. One plants on the foundation, another waters what's been planted. But God makes it grow. 
If it's built on the foundation of Christ, God makes it grow. Here at the church uh, that I serve, North Cross, we're approaching our 75th anniversary as a community of faith. 75 75 years of, of being a worshiping congregation. I have been fortunate enough to serve 10 of those years. If there has been any good that has come from my time as a leader of this community of faith, it's all been by God's grace. As I came to lead this group, we picked up the work built on the foundation of Jesus that that goes all the way back to Christ. We joined in the continuity of the Spirit's work from, from that moment all the way through history to this moment. Work that was planted and watered by the pastors that went before me, by the lay leadership that, that went before us. With all those pastors and with all those lay members, we just built upon their work. And again, their work was itself built upon the work of others. All of us connected through the activities of Christ. That there's been, If there's been any fruit that's grown, it's been by God's grace. And I've, as, I, as I reflect upon that time, as I reflect upon my time here, I'm thinking of the lives that have been changed through community service I mean, in, in our community, but really beyond. I'm thinking about all the generations that have supported the, the various ministries and, and opportunities we've had to, to impact those experiencing hunger or homelessness packing meals, bringing in cans to be distributed, thinking about even a blessing box. If, if you are in Kansas City and you've been part of the North Cross community, you, you know that we've, we've even got a little box here on our, our physical property where, where we've been able to share some of our resources with the larger community. There have been those here through the church that have have put together little care kits that are distributed to those we find uh, living on the streets, individuals and families that, that we try to offer just a small, a, a small relief, a small, a small token of recognition. And I think about just the hundreds of people that have been impacted through that ministry alone. I'm thinking about the transformation that I've witnessed as we've baptized Dozens of infants and adults. I'm, I'm picturing the scores of confirmands and others that we've welcomed into membership. I'm thinking about the, the literal thousands of people who we've engaged online at, through this technology. And, and, and I know that for some of you, it's made a, a real difference. It's, it's made a real impact in your life. I'm hearing the names of all those that we've celebrated completing their course in faith and resting from their labors as we grieved their death. I'm thinking about potlucks and s'mores, cookouts, youth trips and food trucks and vacation Bible schools. I'm thinking about small groups and communion. I'm thinking about prayer circles and and the renewing of wedding vows. I'm thinking of candlelight Christmases and early morning Easter's. And while you have have perhaps not experienced all that in our midst, it's part of what we've done here and in and through the people of North Cross. It's it's part of what we've been able to do as a church, a worshiping community, come together to live out this way of Christ. I think about the the seeds that have been planted that that others have watered and, and, and the ways in which God has made it grow. None of it came out of nothing, right? It, we, didn't, we didn't just make it up. We're part of this continuity of the Spirit that's been working from before time, even up to this time. Again, in our context, starting in 1950, all the way to today, yes. But 1950, when this church was planted... 
It was a seed planted from another place and another time, another faith community that had a dream of there being a, a worshiping community in this place and time. I say from 1950 to today, yes. But today, this moment when we're experiencing this opportunity together, that's not the end of the story. I recognize seeds even now being planted that will soon be watered by others, that we pray that God will, will bring to fruition. So I wonder if you join me in, in hearing again Paul say to us, plant and water and let God make it increase. Be united in mind and thought. Keep the unity of the faith. Another call for us to work together, to love together, to share together. Build upon the one true and sure foundation of Jesus Christ, who is the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who, who guides us and leads us and shows us the way. As we pass the baton to, to new leaders, to those that are, that are coming to guide us into the future, I am thankful for all those who have gone before me even as I pray for those who will come next. I'm grateful to have been a small part of God's good lived out among, among us. And I want to encourage you, again, to, to keep playing and learning and sharing, planting and watering, finding a way to thank someone who, who perhaps planted a seed in you. Even as you water the seed, someone else is planted in another. And in that way, we might keep breathing in the Spirit of God and breathing out God's grace. That we find ourselves in this stream of the Spirit who existed before us and will continue beyond us. That we get to participate in this moment, in this life, in this time. Keep Breathing together, I suggest, because life is better together. Will you pray with me? God, for all that you have done before this moment, we give you thanks. For the lives impacted and changed, for the, for the ways in which your spirit moved men and women to plant the seeds, the fruit of which we enjoy today. And God, I give you thanks for all that you will do in the future, for your spirit that will continue to guide us and direct us and help us and challenge us, that the seeds that we have planted might be nourished and nurtured until they grow up producing the fruit of the Spirit that others will soon enjoy. Would you keep us mindful of our place in this continuity of, of grace, the, the ways in which we get to participate with you, but, but God, would you, would you also help us to trust that you are the one who makes it grow. Help us to surrender to you in that, in that way so that we could, we could participate and cooperate and support and, and help. But God, would you help us um, to know that the foundation's already been laid. It is... It is Jesus Christ, and if we, can, if we can build upon that foundation, good and glorious things will come. So again, we say thank you. In the name of Jesus, and by the power of his Spirit, we pray these things and ask blessings upon all that will happen next. Amen.